Good morning. Welcome to Dekula United Methodist Church online Sunday service. We're glad you're here. I'm Roger Myers. I teach the senior Sunday school class, Prime Times. And again, thank you for being here. If this is your first time here, welcome. We hope that our message will be enlightening to you spiritually and also very affirmative. We hope that you will come back to the Cooley United Methodist Church again. Now, we know during these uncertain times that things are not as like we would like them to be, so we need to pause and just stop a minute and remember what God said to us. He loves us. He's with us. He'll always be with us. He'll get us through these uncertain times, and we'll be able to go back to our normal worship services on Sundays. So, I would leave you with a message from Jesus from the book of Revelations. Jesus said, He who hath an ear, let him listen to the spirits when they talk to the churches. We should all listen. Amen. My name is Kimberly Drew. I've been a member here at Decula United Methodist Church for 16 years. I'm so glad that you've decided to worship with us this morning. Please join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I ask you to give us the compassion it takes to care for one another. Faith that surpasses our current understanding and the courage to support others as you would. Help us be a place of refuge and a constant presence of love and support for all those experiencing fear, anxiety, and loneliness. I ask that you care for the physical needs of those who are struggling to provide for their families. Bring peace and healing to those who have lost loved ones or are dealing with life-threatening illnesses. These days have certainly brought us unimaginable challenges and obstacles, but Lord, help us to remember that you are our one true source of hope. Please help us come to you for comfort and guidance during these times. It's through your grace that we can continue to serve one another in your name, no matter the circumstances. Father God, I ask for your peace in place of our anxiety. 
Lord, let us all recognize that we are all your children as we recite the prayer you have taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hello. We'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our guest preacher for this morning. Um, our district superintendent, Reverend Dr. Jane Brooks, will be bringing the homily. Normally, a district superintendent is in two, sometimes three churches every Sunday, uh, three to four to five services every Sunday, and they can stay kind of busy and it's been difficult in this time of quasi-lockdown to get around and see and be with uh, the churches and the pastors and the people. So our superintendent, uh, Reverend Jane Brooks, has come up with a way to reach out to her churches and she has recorded a video and it will be today's service. I want to say that uh, Dr. Brooks has been incredibly supportive of the Culey United Methodist Church, uh, of me and what we're trying to do here. She's the one that brought me uh, to this situation as the interim pastor and she has been consistently supportive behind the scenes to making sure that we have what we need, uh, can do the best we can and move along uh, in good order in these times. So it is uh, with a great amount of pleasure that I bring to you the person who's been instrumental with us for the past several months, uh, Reverend Dr. Jane Brooks. Hi, I'm Jane Brooks, and I'm the District Superintendent of the Atlanta Emory District. It's a joy to be together with you today. You know, vacations are on hold for a lot of us this summer. I don't know that's true for me, but I've got memories of family vacations with our children. And one of the things I remember from those vacations is that there were always their questions coming from the back seat. And sometimes those questions started less than five miles from home. Things like, are we there yet? When will we get there? How much longer? And now nine weeks into the COVID-19 pandemic, we're asking questions again. We're asking them not only as children, but as adults, and not just from the back seat. Is it safe to go out now? Are the schools reopening this fall? Can our kids go to camp? Will I be able to start to college and actually be in the classroom? When can we go swimming? When will I be able to hug my family and my friends? Are we ever going to have church in person again? I miss my friends at church and I want to see them. When? Are we? Can we? Should we? So many questions. After Jesus' death and resurrection, as he was still with his disciples, they posed to him a final question. Luke records it for us in the first chapter of the Acts of the Apostles in verses 6 through 11. Let's listen to God's word as it's contained in the Acts of the Apostles. As a result, those who had gathered together asked Jesus, Lord, are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel now? And Jesus replied, It isn't for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. Rather, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. After Jesus had said these things, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going away, and as they were staring toward the heaven, two men in white robes stood next to them. And they said, Galileans, why are you standing there looking toward heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way that you saw him go. And this is the word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. 
Forty days from the resurrection of Jesus, the disciples had gone from despair and fear to joy and hope as Jesus continued to appear among them. And now they were anticipating what was next. He had told them to wait. Wait for what, they wondered. Are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Are you going to take us back to the glory days of David? Wouldn't that be great? But when? Jesus just said, wait, go back to Jerusalem. And then he disappeared into the clouds and they began to wait. Do you ever wonder why waiting is so hard for us? When we are made to wait, it feels like time is standing still, especially in our culture of instant gratification. We want what we want and we want it now. Fast food, same day or next day delivery, the fastest internet speed we can get. We're like Adam and Eve in the garden. We get tired of waiting. We don't want to follow what God tells us to do. And so we take matters into our own hands and we make our own plans because we think sometimes we know what's best. But the Bible teaches us that it is in waiting that God's people most clearly understand God's faithfulness and God's purpose. The psalmist sings, wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Jesus waited for 30 years to begin his ministry and all the while God was preparing him and preparing the world. The apostle Paul declared that the entire creation is waiting, groaning, he said, for the realization of rebirth through Christ's resurrection and defeat of sin and death. Waiting time does not have to be wasted time. Even in an instant response culture, still we must wait. You might be waiting for a better job or waiting to get a job, waiting for a cure, waiting for a vaccine, waiting to drop those last 10 pounds, waiting to discern God's will. Life is full of waiting. The disciples went back to the upper room in Jerusalem and they waited as Jesus instructed, but they were not passive. They did not spend their time couch surfing, I don't think. After Jesus ascended to heaven, they returned to Jerusalem where they prayed and they were together with one another. The scriptures tell us that Mary was there. Jesus's brothers were there too. And while they were all together, they decided to replace Judas with a new disciple, with Matthias. They were already anticipating the future as they waited. As they did all of this, they must have meditated, meditated a lot on Jesus's promise that they would receive power from the Holy Spirit to tell them about, to help them tell about Jesus, not only at home in Jerusalem, but beyond to Judah and Samaria. While they waited, they prayed and they studied and they acted together. Their waiting was grounded in expectation based on knowledge and trust. Because you see, Jesus had done everything he ever told them he would do. They knew his promise was sure. So as they waited, God helped them prepare for what was coming. And that, dear friends, is where I believe that we find ourselves today. We are waiting too. What are we waiting for? And what are we doing as we wait? Do we pray? If we're waiting for a job, do we update our resume? If we want to be well, do we get some exercise and choose healthy food? While we wait for a vaccine, do we practice safe distancing? Do we search the scriptures? Do we seek the wisdom of faithful people? Do we learn something new and hear new points of view? If we're waiting for the return of life as we used to know it, we're gonna be waiting forever. God has been and is preparing for us something new. We're not going back. And even as we are being prepared, we are witnesses for Christ in ways that we never imagined. 
As we have sheltered in place through virtual worship, through small prayer groups, through Bible studies, through sharing and caring with food, with making masks and gowns and giving money, we are reaching new people and different people and often more people than we were before we sheltered in place. And even as we begin to imagine returning to our church buildings, because the buildings do help us with ministry, we have seen as never before that we're not bound by those buildings. We are discovering that the church has not closed after all. Our hearts and our minds and our hands have been open. Jesus promised, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judah, and Samaria. John Wesley claimed that promise when he said, all of the world is my parish. While we have been waiting, God has been working in and through us. We have become competent with Facebook Live and Zoom. Our beloved pastors and worship leaders and even our children and our spouses have become televangelists and video producers. We have stayed home in our Jerusalems and we've done what we could with creativity and with Holy Spirit power. As we begin to emerge, the world is still with us, waiting and groaning for the new creation, longing for the fulfillment of Christ's redemption from evil from poverty, from racism, from war, from greed, from fear, from hatred and from disease. There is still much to be done in Jerusalem and Judah and Samaria. The need for Jesus is as great as it's ever been, if not greater. And we're empowered to be witnesses with Jesus, to join with Jesus in bringing in a new creation. Are we there yet? How long? When? It's not for us to know, but God prepares us still and we are not alone. Let's not get tired of doing good because in time we'll have a harvest if we don't give up. Those are the words that Paul wrote to his friends in the church at Galatia. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, may it be so. Dekula UMC youth are finding ways to celebrate each other and have a little fun with two Dekula yard signs and geocache boxes. From toilet paper, sunglasses, and tuna packets, you never know what may end up on your lawn. The only rules? Pass it on to someone who hasn't participated, decorate the sign, and take something and leave something in the box. 
While we've been unable to meet in person and gather in groups, we're still finding ways to connect through Zoom calls, social media challenges, and yard signs. different youth passed the sign around and a few volunteers even participated in the fun. We currently don't know where the signs or boxes are, which we knew would happen eventually. Should you see them, please let Kristen know. Erica McDougal here, wife to Nick and mom to Sam and Zach. We've been members of Decula Methodist since 1999. Giving has always been very important to us for many reasons. Your gifts and tithes help the church to grow, not only in Decula, but in the world. And while we are apart, we're not together in the physical building of the church, there are several ways that you can share your gifts and your offerings. First, send your check directly to the church. We are getting the mail. Second, have your bank set up your online bill pay and contribute directly to the church. Third, donate to the church via our website, www.deculaumc.org, and click on the Give tab. And finally, you can text the word GIVE to 833 763-0023. Thanks everyone. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. We love you. We miss you. Bye-bye. Thank you for being with us today uh, in this time of uh, worship, this service. Uh, we recognize it's not high church. Uh, we emphasize the more intimate uh, getting to see one another, hear different voices, and participate in a time when we can touch base with one another and hear a good word, hear a prayer. Um, it's a way of staying connected in these times. We do look forward to the first opportunity of safely coming back together when that happens. In the meantime, we get by by saying hi to one another and seeing faces we're familiar with. And we want to encourage you to continue being the church away from this video setting. Find ways to be helpful to one another, find ways to minister to one another, find ways to be uh, supportive of people who might not have all the things and all the confidence that some of us do. My suggestion is that by win a benediction today is to be kind to everyone. You know people are dealing with stuff and it can be hard. Some people are, have their very livelihoods on the line. Other people are considering entire career changes or different paths of, of being connected to the world. Uh, but there are heavy issues and serious concerns. So whenever you can, just find ways to be kind. God may have chosen you to be the answer to someone's prayer today or tomorrow or the next day. Please pay attention and don't be too shy about taking advantage of those opportunities to be a witness for the kindness that Jesus showed all his people and that we can model and show people today. God be with you. We'll see you again. Amen.